Well, what's this? No, it's OS X running on my ThinkPad. Well, I mean, OS X runs on Intel, so why not? Actually, there's a reason why not. I'm Tom Merritt from CNET.com. I'll show you how this is done and why you might not want to do it on today's Insider Secrets. So yes, this is OS X. I know I've showed you how to make Windows look like Mac OS X before, but this is the real thing, see? There's a group called OSX86 Project at osx86-project.org. They've been around for a couple of years, and they have a wiki that tells you how to run OS X on an Intel machine. Now, the problem is Apple doesn't want them to do this. They don't want anybody to do this. So I'm here to tell you the pitfalls of trying to do this yourself. This will break your end user license agreement. Apple doesn't allow their program to run on anything but an Apple labeled computer and no sticking an Apple sticker on your ThinkPad isn't going to get you out of the license agreement. You also need a patch which may or may not violate the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. We'll explain all this as we go along. Forgetting the legal issues, you should also realize you really risk messing up your computer if you don't know what you're doing. So just don't try this at home. Let me do it for you. Here's what I needed. A laptop hard drive, an external hard drive case, and a legitimate copy of OS X. No piracy. This bears repeating, my friends. It's one of the reasons people are even objecting to discussing this topic at all. You should not pirate software, okay? If you have a legitimate copy of OS X, it can't be installed on any other machine either, or you're breaking copyright. Is that clear enough? And we need a couple downloads too. The first one's called Mac Drive 7. This program lets your PC read the Mac files on the CD. And I'm going to install that on this ThinkPad that's running Windows. It's different than that OS X machine there. Once I've got Mac Drive, then I need something to image the OS X disk with. I'm going to use something called Ultra ISO. Now this is where we should stop. You can legally make one copy of your OS X hard drive for backup purposes. That's in the Apple EULA. But to get it to run on an unauthorized machine like a ThinkPad, you need a patch. Now you can find a pre-patched image of OS X on the internet, but that's illegal. It's piracy. A better way would be to patch it yourself. There's a program written by a programmer called Maxis, which can patch the OS X kernel. Problem is, they had to decrypt some files to make the patch work, and that probably violates the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. In fact, me telling you where to find the patch might violate the DMCA. So don't do it. Again, go to the OSX project to learn more about the legalities involved. Instead, let me show you how a patched image would work. I moved my patched image into the root directory of my C drive. Next, I needed Forensic Acquisition Utilities from gmgsystemsinc.com. It's a pretty powerful tool that I used for a mundane purpose, copying the OS X image bit by bit to an external drive to make it bootable. However, it's also a useful tool for making that backup image of your OS X drive I talked about earlier. I unpackaged the FAU files to the C drive right next to my disk image. I had a ThinkPad hard drive here in this case. So that's plugged into the Windows machine. It's actually the drive that will go into this machine. So I'm going to take the image and bit by bit copy it using a program called DDEXE from the Forensic Acquisition Utilities and copy the image to this drive. Now to do that, I need to know the physical address of this drive. So I downloaded WMI tools from Microsoft and I used WMI Object Browser to determine that the E drive was actually physical drive one. See that string there? That's what I needed to remember. Then I called up the command prompt. I typed in the dd command with the name of my image file and the physical address of the destination drive. The drive then began copying the image to the external drive. Once I had it copied from the Windows machine, I just took the drive out of the case. And this is the actual drive I used. I screwed it into this casing that goes into the ThinkPad and slide it into the ThinkPad. And boot up into OS X. The Wi-Fi doesn't work, but the Ethernet does, and it's a little sluggish because it's an old ThinkPad, but the fact of the matter is, it's OS X on a ThinkPad. It's worth reminding you again, as fun as it is to play around and make this happen, it does break the EULA and the patch has legal issues, so you're best just to stay away from it. Besides, it doesn't really run that well on an old ThinkPad like this anyway. It's a little sluggish and a little buggy. To be safe, 
I'm gonna wipe this hard drive now and put Ubuntu on it. That's a lot more legal and just as fun. I'm Tom Merritt. That's it for this edition of Insider Secret on CNET.com. Once I had it copied from the Windows machine, I just took the drive out of the case. Of course, I had to uh, screw it into the cartridge case for the ThinkPad. Pop it in the ThinkPad. Right side up. And boot up into OS X. For more video like this, go to CNET.com and click on CNET TV.